everyone, welcome. Thanks so much for joining this evening. Um, for the next 15 minutes, we are going to be um, with John T. Hall, who is one of the student recruitment officers for the University of Melbourne. Um, and he's going to be chatting to you all about their DVM program. So I'll let you take it away, John T. Thanks, Sarah. Um, nice to be here again um, at another Austrek event. Um, I would like today, um, as Sarah said, just to talk a bit about our DVM course. I know it's quite a popular course um, in Canada. And um, uh, for those of you who have considered studying your vet degree down under, down here in Australia, um, then please um, enjoy. So yeah, the University of Melbourne, if you've never been to Australia, um, Melbourne is on the southern end of the country. Um, it's the second largest city of a little over 5 million people. So it's a reasonably large city. Um, we're right near the heart of the city. So you see in the background there, the CBD, um, in the foreground is the campus, which is, um, yeah, the second oldest university in Australia. So um, it's got that kind of traditional sandstone uh, vibe to it, if you like that. Um, but there's also a lot of very modern facilities, as you'll see in a minute. Um, our DVM is, we're also the oldest uh, vet school in Australia, um, so we've been teaching vet science for over 100 years at this point, um, and most recently in, in 2019 we also um, underwent a, a major renovation of the campuses um, at both the um, Parkville campus, the main campus you saw in that photo, and also our Werribee campus, which is the veterinary hospital. Um, you can actually see one of the new buildings at Werribee in the background behind me. Um, so we, yeah, we are the oldest vet school, but we have the newest facilities, which is a nice um, contrast. Um, it's a four year grad degree, similar to the DVM you would do it at a North American university. Um, and as I'll mention a bit more in a minute, it's also similarly accredited. Um, we've got 140 places a year and we reserve 50 of those for international students. Um, many of our international students do come from North America, but they also come from um, all over the world. Um, Margaret here was from um, Indonesia. Uh, she graduated a couple of years ago now, but um, yeah, she um, uh, did both her Bachelor of Science and DVM at Melbourne Uni. Um, so, you know, one of the other reasons why would you want to come all the way to Australia to study vet science? Um, Apart from anything else, we are a very highly ranked vet school. Um, we're currently 18th in the world in the QS subject rankings. Um, and the university as a whole has been ranked number one in Australia for almost 10 years at this point. So we're, we're consistently at the top of those national rankings um, and also quite um, near the top of the international rankings, ranked 33rd in the world in times higher education. So you are coming to a world-class institution and also a world-class vet school at Melbourne Uni. Um, I mentioned accreditation, um, very important, I'm sure, to all of you um, who uh, are in North America that you actually are accredited to work there. The good news is that we have um, accreditation with the AVMA. So um, if you complete your DVM at Melbourne, you are fully accredited um, to work in US and Canada. Um, you'll still need to do the NAVLI exam, which some of you will no doubt already be aware of, um, but that's no different to if you went to a North American school. So most of our students do their NAVLI in the fourth year, and we actually kind of guide them through that process. Um, you are also accredited with the ABC, uh, which is the Australasian Veterinary Boards Council, which covers Australia and New Zealand, um, I think parts of the Pacific as well. Um, and then the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons in the UK, which also provides accreditation in, in former British colonies like Singapore and Hong Kong. Um, there are possibilities of work elsewhere, but the accreditation requirements can differ so wildly that um, don't quite have time to go into that right now. But um, in terms of, of actually getting into the course, these are our entry pathways. I would say virtually all of the people who are listening to this would be looking at the, the standard graduate entry pathway, which you see down the bottom in the orange. Um, completing your science-based bachelor's degree um, outside of, of Melbourne Uni and then applying for graduate entry to the DVM. Um, and in terms of, of a science-based degree, what we need is something that's predominantly science-based. So usually at least two thirds of the subjects have to be kind of in, in sort of noticeably scientific fields. So for example, the philosophy of science wouldn't count or a lot of social sciences wouldn't count, but something like biochemistry, uh, biology, um, zoology, 
um, a whole range of other areas um, that are often in the Faculty of Science would, would be counted um, as, as being science-based. And apart from that, we do require prerequisites in biology and biochemistry. Um, I mentioned earlier the Werribee campus. Um, so you would spend, if you do a DVM in Melbourne, you've got four years. The first two are at the Parkville campus. Um, that is probably the more conventional um, two years um, in terms of it being closer to what you might experience in undergrad with um, lectures and tutorials and lab groups and so forth. And it's a little more on the theoretical end of the degree. Um, but that does lay the foundation for the more clinically intensive third and fourth years. Um, now, all of third year is taught at Werribee, so um, a lot of students even actually um, kind of relocate themselves and, and uh, you know, rent a house near Werribee. With, um, there's a lot of share houses near that campus um, so that they can be close to the campus for it's a pretty demanding year in third year. Um, the, the contact hours do keep going up a bit from one year to the next. Um, you'll also then spend a large chunk of the fourth year at Werribee um, uh, doing rotations. Beyond that, though, the rest fourth year is actually lecture free, so it's entirely clinical, and the rest of that year will be um, spent uh, doing rotations in, in vet clinics, vet hospitals, zoos, wildlife sanctuaries, anywhere that you're able to get a suitably accredited um, veterinarian to supervise you, and that actually does include overseas. Um, so for students who um, want to go and have kind of almost a working holiday back to Canada, that's certainly an option. You could do a couple of rotations um, back in Canada if you wanted to as part of your, your fourth year. Um, or should I say, it seems like it is now an option since um, uh, the Australian border looks to be reopening fairly soon um, and we actually think we'll be able to travel again. So that is certainly something students have enjoyed in the past, although not so much in the last 18 months. Um, just a quick overview of the degree here. As I mentioned, the first two years, a little more foundational and theoretical. Um, the main practical component um, that sets these two years apart would be um, animal handling training and the non-clinical placements, which are often referred to as, as farm work. Um, we don't actually expect you to have any um, practical experience when applying. I should point that out because that's quite different to some American vet schools. Um, a lot of students do, and it's great if you have had some, but it's not actually a requirement of entry. Um, so that is um, something you will do in those first couple of years. Um, year three, as I mentioned, is clinically intensive. It's when you would choose a, a pre-track, which is um, one of those four areas, equine, small animal, production animal, or government industry and conservation health. Um, and then that evolves into a, an actual track in one of those areas in, in fourth year. And what that is, is a kind of a, an informal specialization in those areas. Um, you will still cover all of those areas in your degree. However, um, by choosing the track that you want to do, you are able to focus more on a, a specific area of, of, uh, of veterinary medicine. And then, as I mentioned, fourth year um, in the Werribee Animal Hospital, um, in external practices, um, wildlife um, sanctuaries, zoos, laboratories, really anywhere that you're able to get proper supervision um, and that, that matches your, your track as well. Um, as I said, yes, placements available around the world. So this is a bit old now, but a few, um, this is an example from a couple of years ago of where students were, were doing their placements, obviously a lot in Australia, but quite a few in, in the northeastern part of the um, uh, United States and Canada, um, and then um, elsewhere around the, the world as well. Um, and yeah, where would you go? What do you do with a vet degree? Um, it won't surprise probably um, almost anyone to, to know that most veterinarians, most vet students want to become veterinarians. Um, and I think at last count around 97% of our, our students will go more or less straight into um, private practice of some sort or another. Um, but um, that's definitely not where the story ends. Um, for a lot of vet graduates, they might spend a few years um, working primarily or exclusively um, in, as veterinarians in one city or another, but then they might go um, into branch out um, into some other fields as well, which could include research, um, working in government or in you know, animal pol policy or welfare, um, doing a PhD and becoming um, an, a researcher or an academic um, to teach the next generation. 
working in pharmaceuticals, like drug trials, drug development, that sort of thing. Um, there's really quite a wide range of careers. So um, it's uh, it's not so much that they've decided to stop working as vets, although some do, um, but quite often it will be kind of a, um, a dual career. So working part-time as a vet and part-time doing something else. Um, and as I mentioned, obviously you've got um, options to work around the world, Melbourne, DBM. Um, as I mentioned, science-based undergrad is needed. Um, we offer a range of um, what, three degrees actually at last count um, for undergrad. I don't think there'll be many people probably wanting to do undergrad, but if you do, please feel free to get in touch with me or uh, via Sarah. Um, it's um, the Bachelor of Science is our accelerated pathway into vet, but otherwise a science-based degree with really any of these majors and indeed a number of others that aren't listed here um, can be suitable. Um, and we do look at um, your final year subjects counted as, as higher, um, in fact, 75% weighting versus your um, second to final year. Um, I should point out that the 2022 intake that's, that um, is coming up very soon is our last intake where we will use science GPA, which is where we only look at the science subject results. In future, we'll actually look at all results. So if you've done a, an elective in history or something, that will actually now be counted as part of the application process um, from 2023 onwards. And this is just a, a kind of rough guide to, to GPA for American students. Obviously, bear in mind that, that we do use that weighting rule. So you can't just look at the GPA off your transcript and know for sure that you've, you've met the requirement. But this is a rough conversion of, of what, what would be equivalent to a 75% at the University of Melbourne, which is what we require for, for international students. And um, yeah, the last main uh, factor, well, there's two more actually, the, the CASPER test, some of you will be familiar with, um, online situational judgment test. Um, you will need to sort of achieve a satisfactory level of performance in this to get in. It won't actually kind of fall into the GPA side of things, but it is kind of a, a yes, no, have you met the requirement um, aspect of admission. Um, if there are any Australian expats or people with um, Australian residency or citizenship in the audience, um, the rules are a bit different. It does actually count towards your uh, admissions prospects. And um, the personal statement is another required component. It can give you a few bonus points towards your selection chances. Um, and I think virtually all vet schools have a personal statement as part of the process. Um, ours is up to 500 words, and it's really your chance to talk about you know, why you want to be a vet, what experience you have, what your motivation is, um, and, and try and sell yourself as a future vet. Um, so we have more detailed information about that on our website, or you can uh, obviously feel free to get in touch with me. Um, that is the uh, end of my kind of actual formal slides. And I think we might have a couple of minutes for questions. Is that right, Sarah? Yeah, yeah, I have two or three minutes for questions. Uh, so yeah, please um, pop the questions in the chat if you have any. If any questions come up after two, uh, definitely head back to Career Echo um, and ask questions in the chat room as well. Perfect. I think we're good to go. Thank you very much, Jaunty. Really appreciate that. Lots of great information about the Melbourne DVM program. Um, yeah, I see you have a screen there. So if you do have any questions or anything, feel free to check out the website um, and head back to Career Echo for any more questions that you have and check out the rest of our presentations that we're having um, for the next 45, 50 minutes of, uh, of the virtual fair. So thank you very much, Jaunty. Thank you, Sarah. Good to see you again. Good to see you again, too. Bye.